Hi, I'm Chelsea Turnbull, and you're watching Mediaplex News Now. We have finished classes for this semester, but we are going to bring you some of the stories we produced for you over the past few weeks. You might call this the best of 2014. I hope you enjoy. It's better to go into a college program knowing what you're going to be in for more than going in blind. More than 1,000 high school students from across Windsor, Essex County attended the college information program in St. Croix College's Classic Gym October the 6th. Students had the opportunity to speak with program representatives from across the college. As well, 23 other colleges in Ontario took part in the event, allowing students to find out about every program available in the province. Katie Jacobs, a 17-year-old high school student at St. Thomas of Villanova, showed interest in the journalism program. Jacobs says it was better to talk to a person face-to-face -face about the different programs available. I really feel a lot comfortable. I was a bit nervous coming here, but I'm really happy about this because I got a whole bunch of note, uh, notes of all information that I was looking for a lot better than uh, the website. The website's good, but it's better to speak to a person face to face to get the information I was looking for. So yes, this is fantastic. Sandy McDonald, a professor in the landscape horticultural program at the college, says he answers a lot of questions about the program. McDonald says a lot of students found out about the program through events like this. I think a lot of the students who have been by, they've just sort of seen us by chance. They've just sort of walked by and they've noticed uh, some plant material setting there and uh, they've had an interest maybe in gardening, that sort of thing. So I don't think a lot of them have uh, been targeted. They haven't uh, noticed on the list and come to see us, but it's more or less by chances they're walking by which I think is true for a lot of the programs here. According to Say Man Ning, the coordinator of the event, the deadline to register for Ontario College programs is February 1st, 2015. Now with many choices for different programs available, such as service worker and educational support, the question is for many students, what program will they be attending come this next fall? For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Justin Prince. While Chrysler is in the heart of Windsor, the hearts of the employees is in giving back to the community. But we're building vehicles for a reason, um, and we also have to help the community um, surround us. That supports us. <laughs> Chrysler workers took a day off from the assembly line to sort through donated coats. Yeah, Michael Breda is the plant manager at the Windsor Dodge Caravan assembly plant. We've been collecting coats for this program for the last couple of weeks at our plant. This program is called Coats for Kids. The campaign distributed about 3,400 coats in 1985, and 29 years later, Debbie Desjardins hopes to give out over 5,000 coats this winter. You know, our community was hit with the auto industry, all the feeder plants, many uh, plant closures, so their families have had to struggle. There's people coming to the country that have never seen a winter, so they really have never seen snow because their countries are warm. She's been on board this program with the Unemployed Help Centre since the Red Cross passed it on five years ago. It's just that right now, because the weather's been nice, uh, people haven't gone in and dug out their winter stuff and they don't know that the coats don't fit their children. Through United Way, these two organizations came together for the first time. Minivans don't get produced just because of a few people. Everybody's involved. With just a little bit of help today in a few hours, the Chrysler volunteers managed to sort through over 3,000 coats today. Distribution starts November 8th. Visit unemployedhelpcenter.ca for all of the details. Mandy Matthews, Mediaplex, News Now. Though the Coats for Kids campaign has passed, volunteers say residents can still receive new coats through the winter. There's only a few sites that will have coats during the winter, but we'll try to accommodate people that are coming into the you know, country late or whatever. And if there's any more coats that people want to donate, call the Unemployed Help Centre to let them know so we have selection for the people. Debbie Desjardins has been the coordinator of Coats for Kids for the past five years. She said there is still a great need for programs like this in Windsor. 
Uh, if you look at some of the people that we've got, we've got a lot of uh, new immigrants that have come to Canada that have never seen snow. So they're trying to get prepared because they've come here without uh, a jacket and they've probably already found that the weather compared to what they've um, lived in is cooler. So they're already needing, you know, something warm to put on. Volunteers say the easiest way to get a new coat this winter is to call the Unemployed Help Centre. It's 944-4900 and they will be able to direct you to who still might have coats. Reporting for Mediaplex News Now, I'm Taylor Bush. St. Clair College's Mediaplex campus held a Ward 3 candidate debate Monday, October 6th. 40 to 50 people attended the debate Monday night. All four candidates, Reno Bordelin, Gabe Maggio, Caroline Postma, and Claude Reno, showed up. The questions asked range from roads to attracting new businesses to more transportation possibilities. Maggio and Postma both gave their opinions on what they believe needs to be focused on most in Ward 3. If we reduce our commercial tax rate, we can start to see investment. We can have investment being spurred in our, in our community. Once we start having investment spurred in our community, I can start to see that the, the blight will be curtailed. I honestly think the biggest issue facing us, again, is city services and the follow-through with those services, which in turn makes your neighborhood a little prettier and a little safer. With Volvio Valentina stepping down as Ward 3 Councillor, it's anyone's seat at this point. For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Ryan Bro. More than 60 people attended the Ward 3 meeting at St. Clair's Center for the Arts. During the two-hour session, questions were sent from Windsor residents and were posed among the candidates. Reno Batolin was there, so was Gabe Maggio and Caroline Postma. However, Claude Reno was a no-show. The candidates had their own areas set up for that evening. Downtown issues were discussed, along with West End problems and the community. Caroline Postma made it clear that security was her main concern for Ward 3. I would like to see more community-based policing um, and honestly I would like to see more uh, of police bonding with the community as strange as that sounds. Um, it's always great to put a face to the service and I'm a true believer in that. Following the closing comments the candidates were open to a meet and greet with the Ward residents. With the advanced polls and the October 27th municipal election around the corner, the answer is this. Caroline Postma, Reno Batorlin, Gabe Maggio, or Claude Reno. The question is this. Who will you vote for as Ward 3 Councillor? Reporting for the Center of the Arts, Aaron Sanders for MNN, Mediaplex News Now. Following months of campaigning, interviews, debates, and advanced polling, Hundreds of media and constituents alike gathered at the Kubota Club, awaiting the announcement of Windsor's new mayor. Drew Dilkins was met by cheers upon his arrival after his landslide win, claiming 55.4% of the vote. He said his message and ideas have not changed. I have one main principle that cannot be compromised. I have the taxpayers back. I work for the taxpayer and not any special interest group. As mayor of Windsor, as I have for the past eight years, I put taxpayers first. This will not change. Uh, first order of business, like I've always said, would be a call, a phone call tomorrow to both the head of Chrysler and the head of General Motor, or the head of Ford and the head of Chrysler, uh, to introduce myself as the mayor elect to tell them how important their business is for our community, and that uh, we would be willing to do anything to make sure that uh, we enhance their business and, and and retain their business in our community. I, Drew Gilkins, having subscribed to my declaration of office as mayor and to my oath of allegiance, solemnly declare that I will uphold and observe my declaration. Of Drew Dilkins was officially sworn in as Windsor's new mayor last night at St. Clair's Center for the Arts. I look forward to working with the university's president, Dr. Alden Wildeman, along with leaders at St. Clair College to continue building strong academic partnerships that leverage resources and help transform our city and our downtown. Dilkins said he is very excited to begin working with the new council and has many ideas on how to improve Windsor over the next four years. He also congratulated all the candidates for running successful campaigns this past season. I'm really excited. It's, uh, it was a hard-fought uh, campaign. You know, the transition was fantastic, and uh, and now you know, standing here on my first day as mayor of the city of Windsor, certainly it's uh, it's uh, it's an honor for me, and it's a very humbling experience. And I'm I'm uh, I'm very grateful that to be given the opportunity by the uh, the residents of the city of Windsor. Five new councillors were also sworn in, including Fred Francis from Ward One. Thank you.
It's an exciting evening, uh, you know, the swearing in of the new mayor, the swearing in of the new council, and uh, it's exciting for uh, the volunteers of the different campaigns, uh, exciting for the family members that sacrificed so much, uh, exciting for the residents, and exciting for everyone on that stage that got sworn in today, because now we could get to the work that we promised during the campaigns, and I know everyone's eager to get down to the work, and there's certainly a lot of work to do over the next four years. Reporting for Mediaplex News Now, I'm Taylor Bush. You are watching the best of Mediaplex News Now. We hope you are enjoying the holidays and are enjoying the stories that we have put together for you. The Mediaplex was front and center when Chair of Media Arts and Design, Lorna McCormick, joined Veronique Mandel and student Sean Frame to talk about the journalism and public relations programs. If you don't know what you want to do, you get a chance to do everything and then, you know, pinpoint what you actually want to do. So that's, that's a great experience at the Mediaplex. The hour-long broadcast featured questions ranging from features of the building, a number of students, to what it was like to attend the Mediaplex and St. Clair College. Armin's Boomalang is one of the hosts of Experts on Call and explains the goal of the radio program. It's a way for us to inform while getting our clients' message across to our listening audience. So it's a great opportunity for people to come on the air and I like to say just hang out and tell us about their business and tell us about how they keep it local here in Windsor-Essex. Veronique Mandel is the Journalism and Public Relations Course Director at the Mediaplex. I think using an opportunity like Experts on Call really gives us an opportunity to get the word out about the Mediaplex and about our programs to a, a much wider audience. For more information about the Mediaplex, you can call the college at 519-972-2727. For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Dan Gray. The second years of the public relations program were split into teams for their end of the semester entrepreneurship project. The teams were faced with pitching their conceptual business ideas to the Four Dragons. With Sam, a lawyer from the Business Accelerator, Ashlyn, a program facilitator at WeTech, Christopher, a graphic designer, and Yvonne, an intern president and CEO at WeTech Alliance. Yvonne explains how the students did. Um, a lot of creativity this year, um, a lot of th really thought out plans in terms of the valuations of companies, the market analysis. There were six groups in the trade show. One of the groups came up with a PR branding and rebranding agency. We get existing or new businesses who want to rebrand their business and we make it um, from scratch and we give them campaigning ideas and we, we just wanted that because in the future that would be something that we would want to do. Another group formed a party planning company. We often are going to be hosting and planning events that are going to take place in our clients' homes. For example, a Super Bowl party or a girls' night in or a shower, those, those sorts of things. In the final weeks of the semester, the second year students are using their feedback from the Dragons to write business plans for their companies. Reporting for Mediaplex News Now, I'm Ryan Bro. Students in the Public Relations program here at St. Clair College have a unique opportunity. Not only do they come here to learn all of the skills they need to be public relations specialists, but they learn in a multimedia mediaplex. And it's so important to be in a facility like this where they know that when they go out, they will be competitive in their field. I decided to come to St. Clair College uh, after university because I kind of feel like I needed a little bit more, a little bit more to kind of make myself marketable. I am a hands-on learner. I am a doer, so I learn best and I can retain information more when I'm actually out using the skills that I'm taught. An example of where this program does that well was our photography classes. So in class we were taught different elements of photography. We were taught the rule of thirds and leading lines and angle and perspective and then we were actually sent out into downtown Windsor into the streets and we were told to capture photos containing those different elements and bring them back to class and present them and that's something that you can't just learn in the classroom, you have to learn that by doing it. So we actually developed an eye for photography and for getting good shots and I really don't think that that can be taught in a classroom. Hands-on training means they'll be marketable, that they can hit the road running when they go into a company. And that's what's setting our public relations program apart and it's also why employers are coming to St. Clair's Public Relations Program looking for good employees. Right now I'm interning in Corporate Communications at Caesars Windsor. It's a really good place for an internship for a PR student because there are so many things that the casino does. After graduation, I was offered a part-time position at Caesars Windsor. 
So I am now an external communication specialist at Caesars Windsor. We give them a skill set that I believe will make them the most marketable of any public relations program. Sean Preville is a journalism graduate who is studying for his master's at the University of Kent. So we thought we would make him our United Kingdom correspondent. So from across the pond, we bring you British Beat. Greetings from the Centre for Journalism at the University of Kent here in the United Kingdom. Here is what's in the news this week. The United Kingdom has ended their combat operations in Afghanistan. The last two camps, Camp Bastion and Camp Leatherneck, were handed over to Afghan control Sunday. A tweet by Prime Minister David Cameron stated he has fulfilled his promise to see the end of combat operations by 2015. The death toll of UK troops in the mission stands at 453. Last week saw the return of Princess Kate to the public eye. Following weeks of dealing with severe morning sickness, the Duchess of Cambridge appeared again in a procession to Buckingham Palace for a meeting with the President of Singapore. Prince William and Princess Kate are still keeping the gender of their baby a secret, but it was announced the child is expected in April of 2015. And election season is looming here in the UK with various by-elections popping up in the Medway towns, including the upcoming election in Rochester and Stroud. This election was sparked by former Conservative MP Mark Reckless's defection to the United Kingdom Independence Party. With this not being the first defection from the Conservative Party, there are questions if the Conservatives will keep their seats in Parliament or if new votes to UKIP could hand the 2015 general election to the Labour Party on May 7th. Now departing from the news, let's take a look at the media here in the UK. And I have to say, it's a different sort of atmosphere, and I'm not just talking about the culture. To become a journalist here in the UK, you need a diploma from the National Council for the Training of Journalists. Many journalists take courses for this, while others attend programs like the ones here at the Centre for Journalism. But the result is the same. You get the diploma, and you have a much better chance at getting the job. As part of the NCTJ, a journalist takes exams in media law, public affairs, shorthand, and of course, reporting, as well as extra options such as court reporting or broadcast journalism. The shorthand, however, is the big ticket for any journalist, as anyone who can get to 100 words per minute or more has a better chance at a job than someone with 60 words. In fact, several employers in the UK will not even take a journalist with less than 100. As many of my fellow journalists back in Canada know, longhand is the standard, but here they use shorthand before ever using a tape recorder. Journalism in the UK, the country often considered where journalism really began, is different, but the experience is well worth it. Plus, it's a bonus getting to experience all of England, as London, for example, is only a 45-minute train ride away. Getting to learn more about this country is something I've looked forward to for years, especially given my grandmother grew up here. That's all for now from the Centre for Journalism in Kent, England. I'm Sean Preble, back to you in the Mediaplex. Hello again from the Centre for Journalism at the University of Kent in the UK. Here's what's in the UK news this week. There have been more developments in the next royal bundle of joy. According to a palace spokesman, Princess Kate is not expecting twins, but another single brother or sister for Prince George. A report by the examiner also notes Prince Harry believes it may be another baby boy based on the paternal side of the family. Also in royal news, Prince Charles and Camilla were in Colombia last week for a four-day tour. They visited an organic and urban sustainability fair where the couple posed for photos and the Prince of Cornwall took on the role of cowboy and even donned the hat. The event took place at the Bogota residence of British ambassador Lindsay Croisdale Appleby. Now, I'd like to speak more about the school I'm at because as I mentioned in my last British Beat, I'm studying here for my masters and wanted to give a bit more detail about this wonderful campus. The University of Kent offers both a bachelor's and master's degree in journalism, which have been ranked in The Guardian as the top journalism program in the UK, while Kent is also listed 20th in the list of top 100 schools in the UK. While here, you learn everything from British reporting methods to politics, media law, and practical multimedia journalism. And you also choose from multiple electives, including sports journalism, advanced multimedia storytelling, or my favorite, reporting conflict. 
In the last class, we are studying the different methods of, as you can guess, the history of conflict reporting. The school is housed in the Gillingham Building at the Medway campus of the University in Gillingham, which is about a 45 minute to hour train ride from London. The University also has a separate campus in Canterbury. While here, you also study additional courses like shorthand, which I mentioned before because the program is accredited by the National Council for the Training of Journalists. Now, if my descriptions of the programs here have piqued your interest, you can check out kent.ac.uk for more information. The school loves to bring in students from around the world, so don't hesitate to apply. That's all from the Center for Journalism at the University of Kent for now. Until next time, I'm Sean Preble. Welcome back to the Mediaplex. I'm Chelsea Turnbull. We hope you will tune in every Tuesday at 6 p.m. right here on Kojiko Cable 11 when we broadcast live from our state-of-the-art St. Clair College Mediaplex in downtown Windsor. Tonight, we are bringing you some of our favorite stories from 2014. Enjoy. As you enter Stags on Windsor's West End, you would see some basketball players practicing, more specifically, the South Windsor Warriors. The Warriors are preparing for their upcoming season. The practice and discipline makes the team of 10 to 13 year olds play like well-seasoned veterans. Head coach Bradley Smalls believes that leadership is the most important trait to team sports. First of all, you gotta be a leader. Somebody's gotta step out as a leader and we had a couple guys of our race stepped out to be that leader. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, appointing one of them the leader and then them leading the team to the promised land. From running suicides to basketball drills, the players strive to perform one step ahead of their future competition. Rody Maslam explains what makes a team successful. That we like work as a team and uh, hard work and like we're committed. But how does the coach feel about his team this year? Team's all right. You know, we've got a lot of returning guys, a lot of guys left. But, you know, makes it easier for playing time and makes it uh, makes it a good competition battle going on. Mazantias says that he wants to show the new players to the Warriors that they are a running team and not a walking one. Preparations for the season for the South Windsor Warriors has begun. Starting mid-October, all it takes is a tough two-month war for that quest for the championship. Aaron Sanders for MNN, Mediaplex News Now. The Windsor Spitfires are off to a rocky start this season, losing three of five games at home. The shining point of their slow start has been the offensive production of rookie center Logan Brown. The 16-year-old has a pair of goals and assists in four games. His first OHL goal coming against the Guelph Storm September 28th. Uh, the guys made a great play and, and uh, I was lucky enough to, to get the puck and be able to score. And It uh, felt great to, to get the first one but it also put the team up by one and, and uh, after a tough loss to the area it, it felt really good to get the first one. The 6'6", 215-pound Chesterfield, Missouri native brings size and skill to Windsor's roster, and assistant coach Bob Jones says he's a big asset to the team. Well, I think he's a big guy, obviously, in stature. Um, you know, his legs aren't completely underneath him yet, but his hockey IQ is off the charts, and he's ultra-competitive. Originally drafted sixth overall by the Niagara Ice Dogs in this year's OHL priority selection, Windsor acquired the Rangy Center in exchange for six draft picks headed back to Niagara. Reporting for Mediaplex News Now, I'm Evan Mathias. It was an up and down weekend for the St. Clair College Saints. The Saints men's and women's volleyball teams took on the Redeemer University College Royals this past Saturday, November 15th at the St. Clair Sportsplex. Both Saints teams came into their matches with 5-1 and one records and needed to beat the Royals to move into a good position to take the lead in the Ontario College Athletic Association West Division. But the Royals had different plans. The women's team lost their best of five matchup three sets to two to a Royal squad which came in undefeated on the road. With the loss, the Saints fell back to fourth in the divisional standings, although it's still having one of its best starts in recent years. Desiree Reddy, a fourth-year member of the team, says the team played to the best of its ability to try to win the final set. Um, it doesn't feel too good, but um, we played to our best potential. We gave it all. Getting to a fifth game is really hard, so... We didn't win three in a row, but we tried to get the fifth. The men's team, meanwhile, had a hard-fought three-to-one victory after a long and emotional final set. During the fourth set of the match, Redeemer and St. Clair had nine tie breaks after swapping points. The match finally ended after the Royals hit the ball 
into the stands. Rob Lynch, the head coach of the Saints' men's team, says his team has championship aspirations when the Sportsplex hosts the 2015 OCAA Provincial Championships early next year. We are, we are hosting provincials, so we're going, to, we're going to be there. We need to win that big game and maybe win one more. And uh, that's, our, that's our goal is to, is to medal and to win two good games when we were back here uh, at provincial time. The focus for the Saints now turns towards their next games against the Sheridan College Bruins, away from their home on Saturday, November 22nd. But there's still a long way to go before the championship. For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Justin Prince. Journalism enables people to be well informed. It's documenting history. It's an extraordinary way for people to be connected with their community. What happens in the world affects us. What happens in our community affects us. What happens in the province affects us. And we get to be the eyes and ears and tell the stories. There are many stories that need to be told and those things add value to our life. I'm always meeting new people. Uh, I'm learning about things that interest me, like topics that I want to learn more about. It's neat to know that so many people are relying on me. It makes you strive for perfection or it makes you strive for accuracy. The journalism program here at St. Clair College is a convergence journalism program. Convergence means the merging together of print, radio and television and the web and putting all different stories into three or four different platforms. In 21st century newsrooms, journalists have to be able to do it all. We ask every one of our uh, reporters to uh, tell stories in multiple ways. There's a different style of writing for print than there is for radio, than there is for television. And it's really important that um, the information gets out that is true to those platforms. We are one of the few, if not the only, uh, program that is actually taking students to a live broadcast and giving them that opportunity and that experience. I've gained a lot of self-confidence. I used to be a really nervous person, a really shy person, but I think this program has helped me come out of my shell. It's given me something that I love to do and that's made me a better person. I find that the students that come out of St. Clair College are already at or above where some of our uh, broadcast um, employees have been uh, over the last several years. I feel that I made the the greatest decision I could two years ago by choosing this program because I have learned so much and I think that I can only um, grow from here. I would hands down recommend the program to someone considering it. I would recommend it to someone that's not even considering it. They teach you such a vast array of different skills, different platforms, different things that you could really apply to so many different careers. Based on literally hundreds of interns I've seen over the years, St. Clair students are better prepared to go into the work environment in media than most students coming out of colleges and universities across North America. I think it's that very comprehensive curriculum that we have that creates converged journalists that sets this journalism school apart. We hope you enjoyed our show. We will be back live in the new year with all new material. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I'm Chelsea Turnbull and you have been watching Mediaplex News Now.